kilda whanau. Um, every time I do a spit, a whole animal on the spit, I get a lot of messages from people asking, um, oh, how do you how do you tie your sheep on? And um, oh, how long do you cook it for? And what sort of wood are you using? Where are you placing your heat, etc., etc. So I've decided to make this YouTube for you guys. Um, going to give you the full breakdown of the gear I use, the cooking times, how I tie the sheep on. Um, where I distribute my heat, how long I cook for, all the rest. Going to give you a full in-depth look at it today. We've got our animal here. It's a beautiful one-year-old lamb, or just under a year old. Nice and fat. So that's our animal. Over here, we've got our um, spit set up. I've just set it up, and I'm running it to make sure it's not walking. Which is by walking, I mean wandering off the coupling. Now this setup here is quite a sophisticated one, it's uh, my brother's setup. So we've basically got a electric motor here, driving a worm gear over to a reducing gearbox, right angle gearbox, to our drive with a rubber coupling to our main pole. This coupling here gets slid back to the back side of here to stop it wandering forwards. There's spike number one, a tong number one, tong number two comes in from the other side. This is our other end stand. We've got wooden blocks there, which we put a little bit of oil on throughout the cooking process. Our fire drum. The fire drum's not necessary, you can light your fire on the ground. But we have this fire drum in case we're at other people's houses and they don't want their grass damaged. So that's the setup. Just basically run an extension lead over, plug it in there, flick it on, she's good to go. Today we're going to be running oak and feedjar as our wood. Um, ordinarily we use a burning drum, which is a drum that sits on the side of the um, setup and you light your fire in the drum and you dig your coals out of the bottom of the drum. Today uh, I'm just going to be um, running my fire straight in the, um, the drum that's underneath the animal and just gently feeding wood into it from the back edges to let it continually produce coals, get nice good smoke and, um, and keep that flavour and heat going. So that's our setup. That's our setup. This is our animal. I'll just go inside, get everything I need. Pardon me, and then we can start tying it on. So this is what you'll need. We've got some rosemary, some garlic, some salt, some olive oil, some wire, pliers, a couple of knives, steel, our lamby lamb. So we're going to get it on the pole, put it on back end first, get the spikes on it put the front spike on, get that into the shoulders, tie the back backbone, back legs and neck down, then we cut the front hocks off to stitch up the belly and she's pretty much done. Right, let's get into it. Okay, lambs on the pole. Got our bottom tongs through the back legs, top tongs through the front shoulders. If it were a bigger animal, they would have gone right through here. Now we've just got to tie the neck down, backbone down, back legs up, and then we can stitch the belly. Now, when I tie the backbone down, I get a small piece of timber and sit it over the backbone. Then we go down through there, around the pole, twitch it underneath. And then we get a, um, a bolt or a gamble or something and we twitch it right up tight. Now the piece of timber is to stop the wire cutting through the backbone as the animal cooks while it's spinning. Alright, let's get all that sorted. Alright, see what I mean there? We've got that piece of timber under there. We've got two ties on here. Just going to get the old gimbal and we're going to twitch those up. So just get that in there, and oh, should twist into a nice tight 
little twitch. Same on this front tie. Twitch it down. That's it. And that there is nice and secure. We could probably get another couple twists on this back one. Now, oh, snapped it. That happens sometimes. No biggie, just chuck another tie on there, give it another twitch. Right, that's our neck tied on. Look at that. Solid as. Just got to do the same here. One in the, about a third of the way back and one a third of the way forward. So like I said, we just get our knife, go right through there, right through there. Bring our wires up through. Twitch them over the top, over our bit of timber. And then we go inside the gut cavity, do our twitch with our gimbal. Then all that's left to do is tie the back legs off. Um cut the front hocks off, stitch up the belly and she's job done, ready to go on the on the fire. Yeah. Right, so we've got our incisions in there. Just push our wire through into the gut cavity. We'll roll it over. Oh, we've come around the wrong side of the pole there. So we just bring that right up like this. Roll it back. Get your piece of wood. Slip it under. Like so. And we roll it back. Now I like to get some garlic and some rosemary and put that in against the backbone there for when I pull it tight so all we need to do now is twitch those up underneath and we spin it back round to the top and we can pull it nice and tight Now if we roll it over, get our gimbal, gimbal, and we push down at the same time as pulling tight. And that is that backbone tie now we repeat the process down here and then we can tie our back legs back all right we've got our neck and backbone tied on we've got our aromatics in there our garlic and our rosemary roll it over please helper you're a good helper young batman got our wood on there stop our ties pulling through nice and tight next step is to tie our back legs back now what we do there is we just wrap around here down to the pole and pull and then back up to this one tighten it up and then put a twitch on each side they don't need to be pulled right back it just needs good tension on it all right I'll show you how that's done So I just like to go. Is that cool? Around nice and tight like that. Twice around the pole. Like that. And then back up to our other leg. Same thing. Wrap. 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 Pull it nice and tight, and that should do. Then we just get our gimbal and pull it 
put on a twitch and that oh and that twitch puts our tension on same thing on this side just like so now I feel like that could do with a little bit more tension so we're going to go a second twitch and the second twitch on this side and that is the back legs tied all right all right so we've cut our front hocks off all we're going to do now is stitch our front legs together before i do that i like to put a cut down in behind the shoulder like so on both sides stuff a clove of garlic in there down each side like so sprigs of rosemary in there oh actually before the rosemary goes in load it up with salt don't be shy with the salt Stuff your rosemary in there. Oh, that's a bit too much rosemary. Get that in there. And then we just get the wire. We just go around there like so. Come over to this one. Repeat the process. And then back. Nice and tight. Let me get our gimbal. And we twitch. One twitch on that one. A couple twitches on that one. That's our front tied off. Now we head to the back legs. Put an incision in there and there. And they want to load it up with salt. Stuff a clove of garlic in there. Oh, can we get one in there? Yep. And, and in with some more rosemary. And that's it pretty much done. Gonna get all our leftover rosemary, chuck it in the gut cavity, stab it down into the old poop chute. Get another whole garlic, throw that in there for more aromatics. Now we're going to stitch up the belly. 
to do that we put cuts along the belly flap next to each other one at the front one at the back and we cut around our hock like so get a little bit of olive oil on there lube it up and we go through over and then back through the same hole and then you slide that up it'll get that lube working until she's stitched like that repeat the process on the other one cutting round our hook lubing it up and over and then back through I might have made that cut a little bit short. Oh no, there we go. There we go. Then we just rotate that into place. Like, come on. So, right, so that's our sheet all tied on, all seasoned. All that's left to do now is we've got to oil the whole thing. Give it a good dusting of salt, light our fire, get it on the heat, start cooking. That's still for me. Don't be shy with the oil. Give it a good rub all over. Get your salt. And it wants plenty of salt. Whanau. It all sort of rolls off and becomes part of the flavour as it cooks anyway. So don't be worried about the too much salt thing. Alright, some Fijar and some oak in there. I'm sort of cheating to get the fire going because I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm running behind schedule. Got my big um, giant jet ball. Part of me. And it's um, got some oak and some Fijar in there. Once that's going, I'll slip that out and build it up a little bit bigger. It's looking good though. It's going to be tasty. Going to be tasty. Alright, we're spinning. We've got a fire at the far end, a fire at the back end. No heat over the back straps whatsoever until the very end of the cook. I'll use this far end for my fire and I'll pull coals out of that fire and distribute them where I need to. For your temperature checks, you should be able to hold your hand there for about 10-15 oh, seconds before it starts to warm up at the start here. Same at the back. We're concentrating all our heat over the shoulders and the arse end because those are the thickest parts of the animal and they'll take the longest to cook. For now, it's basically a low and slow, get that beautiful oak and Fiji smoke to go right through that meat. And yeah, throughout the cook, we gradually move our heat closer and closer in and then right at the end we sort of fill the whole tray up with coals and then we we essentially we're grilling the animal off but for now we just keep it spinning make sure there's no big fires directly under the meat and um, yeah that's about it pretty simple really we are one hour into our cook we've started to get some color on there you can see on this very end here at the tips of these hocks where there was a fire in the corner, it's gone black and sooty. You don't want that on the rest of the meat. It doesn't matter so much there because there's nothing edible there. 
So that's why when you've got the burn drum off to the side, you can redistribute your coals without having to have an actual fire. The way that's happened is the flames have been licking those on their way round, and that gives you that um, resiny black sootiness. But we've got good colour developing. Like I said, still similar amount of heat pumping into the arse and the shoulders. No heat in the centre there, keeping those back straps nice and raw. We'll just keep, I'm just feeding our oak into this end and dragging it forward as I need it for heat. It's looking bloody good though, Farno. Checking again in another hour. Alright, team. We're at the two hour mark now. Getting really good colour. <clears throat> you can see that the natural fat is starting to render by how shiny it is on the arse end there and up the front there on the brisket and the shoulders. But still no heat at the back straps, team. Raw. Raw back straps still, which is what we want. Looking good. So we'll sign out now. Check back in in another hour's time. We are just over three hours into our cook. Two and a half-ish hours to go. Got our ember fire ticking away at the end. I've spread my coals at the back here. Lifted the temperature a little bit. Because we've got our good smoky layer on our um, animal now. So it'll be nice and sealed. So we just start more distributing our heat around but still keeping it away from our back stakes still focusing it on the shoulders and the arse end as you can see it's just starting to run looking bloody beautiful great colour see the juices there here nice and red it's a good indicator that it's still nice and rare at the back straps. Got good juice running off the shoulder. Just going to keep it ticking away. Nice constant heat. Shuffle our coals forward as we need them. See you in another hour. Just look at it team. We are at the four hour mark. What you'll start to see about this point is joints like that and that that are under tension will start to pop. It's normally the back legs that go first, the neck if it's pulled tight enough, then the shoulders will go, and last, the backbone will start to pop through. Like I said, we're four hours in, it's time to start bringing our temperature up now, gradually, for the next hour and then for the last hour we really pump the heat into it but it's looking really good look at that juice just rolling around it beautiful We're at the four and a half hour mark and you can see there um, the shoulders are starting to split so what we do is we snip those two wires and that takes the tension off that and stops too much heat being allowed into the back straps for this last hour and a half. Oh, there you go, you've seen that spring apart. We've got heat the whole way along now. We're just looking at creating a nice crispy outside layer, getting into that final grill off stage. It's looking bloody good though. Smells wicked too. We're into our final hour. It's looking and smelling amazing. You can see it's split there on the backbone. Split on the shoulder, split on the back legs. She's cooked. All we've got to do now is grill it. And we're doing that with some little Fijoa sticks, keeping the open fire 
away from the meat so we don't get that black sooty resin on the meat. Right team, she's all done. It's been five and a half hours, didn't quite hit that six hour mark but I don't think we needed to. It is cooked through and grilled off. Let's get it off, get it off the pole and rest it for a bit before we cut into it. There it is team. Look at that juice just flowing out of there. done. I'll leave it to rest for about 10 minutes and then we'll get it off the pole and carve up a little bit. See what it looks like on the inside. Okay, getting it off the pole, exactly the same as putting it on but in reverse. Clip all your wires, pull all of them out, um, undo your front tong, slide it off the pole, slide the whole pole out of the animal and then you can start carving it. Look at all the juice that's just flowing out of it. Oof. Yummy. It's a nice crackly layer. Mm. So good. Got it off the pole now. She's falling apart pretty much. Look, the old neck's falling off. Nice crispy layer. I love this part. It's always been my favourite part since I was a kid. Back legs. Coming out pretty clean. Let's hack into it. end off first. Yeah. Water out of there. Give it a little bit of a bend up. Oh. Hey, almost lost it, Fano. Beautiful aromatics in there. She's cooked right through. Look at that, Fano. It's just falling apart under the old shoulder. Oh look at that. Perfectly cooked shoulders. Perfectly cooked rear ends. Let's see what these back straps look like. Juicy as oh. it's got juice in the eye. Oh, beautiful! It just falls apart. <laughs> Perfect, Fano. Oh, well, we'll finish carving this and then have a feed.